Healthcare is changing. How you pay a doctor is changing. Kidney care is really changing. What's up San Antonio and world? I'm Dr. Kasim Butt and I'm a kidney doctor. And welcome to Your Kidneys, Your Health, the premier channel for you to understand your body and your health in a simple way. Now, I need y'all to do me a favor. Please share and like this video and like my page to help get the word out. The kidney care world is changing dramatically. You see, kidney disease is costing Medicare so much that it's actually changing the way it pays doctors. So typically, Medicare pays doctors on a fee-for-service basis. What that means is each time a doctor sees a patient, either as a visit or a procedure, they bill and receive money, which can add up. However, now Medicare is embracing the idea of paying a capitated payment, which is essentially a set fee paid on a monthly or quarterly basis. Consider it like a subscription fee, one that does not change no matter how many times you actually see the patient. What this does is incentivize the doctor to help save costs. And what they're really trying to do is incentivize, incentivize home dialysis, dialysis at home, and transplant, as opposed to doing dialysis in an in-center outpatient setting. Medicare has come up with new kidney care payment models. And that's what this video is about. Now, even though this is uh, gonna be applied to the real field of nephrology, I really believe this is gonna be applicable to other types of practices as well and may represent the future of medicine. So this video is really meant for those that are really interested, like professionals, doctors, nurses, insurance companies, billers, office managers, CEOs, CFOs, those that really have skin in the game. But if you're a regular patient or regular person wanted, or just interested, please feel free to watch. So what I've done is simplify it to make it easy to understand. So here we go. What's up guys and welcome to my first video lecture. I'm Dr. Kasim Butt and I'm actually a uh, nephrologist, actually an interventional nephrologist in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I work with a group called South Texas Renal Care Group. I'm pretty heavily involved in that group. I'm a partner in that group, but I'm also pretty um, actively involved in social media. So if you can do me a favor, please share and like this video. But also, if you can do me a favor and like my page on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube, that would really help me out. Now, um, these kidney care models that CMS came out with are going to essentially revolutionize nephrology. Now, even if you don't partake in them, meaning CMS doesn't select you or you don't voluntarily uh, participate in the other two models, uh, you're probably going to be affected by this. And these do represent probably the future of nephrology. And I feel like most nephrologists right now are in the dark about this. So a few weeks ago, I actually created this presentation to present to my group. And, but I found that it could be probably helpful to a lot of y'all in, in practice as well. Now, just so you know, I've pretty extensively gone over CMS's website. I've listened to webinars from CMS, uh, from ASN, RPA, um, also from some of the dialysis chains as well. So I've, I've kind of got a good grasp of it. Now, this is not a lecture to go into excessive details about the, 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 the models, but to more, more likely give you a uh, under, general understanding and conceptual understanding of where, it's, where, where medicine is going. Because I really do think this is kind of the future of nephrology, but also possibly the future of medicine. Uh, so well, let's go ahead at this point and start. All right, so in July of 2019, they came out with the executive order, okay? Um, now uh, called um, Advancing American Kidney Health. There are three goals of that executive order. Number one, by 2025, have 80% of the new uh, ESRD patients start dialysis at home or get a preemptive transplant. Again, by 2025, 80% of the new ESRD people diagnosed with ERCD, ESRD, they want them to start dialysis at home or get a preemptive transplant. Now, this total does not include the current patients that are in center, okay? It's the new ones diagnosed in 2025. Now, by 2030, they want to re reduce the incidence of ESRD by 25%. And by 2030, they want to double the number of kidneys available for transplant. Okay, so how do we get there? How do we get patients there? How do we get doctors there? Well, in order for us to get there, we have to change the incentives for doctors. And they've come up with 
new value-based kidney uh, disease payment models. And there's three of them. Okay, there's three of them here. We have the ESRD treatment choices model, which is the mandatory one. We have the KCF uh, model, um, uh, which is a kidney care first model, and the CKCC, which is the comprehensive kidney care contracting model. Okay. Now, for the uh, for the sake of uh, uh, for the sake of the, the lecture, I'm just going to kind of use the acronyms from here on out, but um, here we go. Now the differences between these models uh, is pretty, uh, pretty significant. So you have to put the ETC in one category and the C, uh, KCF and the CKC in the other, uh, in the other category. And the reason why is the ETC, guess what, is mandatory. It is mandatory. CMS will select you starting Jan 1. Okay, they will select you if they want you to participate in it. Okay, whereas the KCF and the CKCC are voluntary. You will actually decide if you want to partake in them. Okay, now the other the difference between these models is the ETC is for ESRD diagnoses. Okay, ESRD patients only. Whereas the KCF and the CKCC are for ESRD and CKD4 and 5. Okay, so they incorporate non dialysis patients. Okay, that's kind of important. That's different now. Now let's just go ahead and go over the ETC model, the mandatory model, okay? Um, what it's doing, the ETC model is trying to create financial incentives for dialysis facilities and, and nephrologists to pursue home dialysis and kidney transplant. It will run from January 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2026, okay? Again, it is mandatory. Uh, CMS will select the participants. They will select you, okay? And the, the, the selection is random, okay? In order to, to avoid selection bias, okay? Uh, will include about 50% of all ESRD facilities and managing clinicians. So 50% of us, guess what, are going to be in this, okay? 50% of us will be randomly selected to be in it, okay? Now it's based off of hospital referral region which is a geographic area, okay, which is our geographic area. What is the hospital referral region? Many of you haven't heard of that before. An HRR is a geographic region uh, that's defined by regional healthcare markets. Uh, it's where patients uh, in, in surrounding areas get their tertiary care, and they typically include areas that have uh, cardiovascular procedures and neurosurgery, okay? Those are the two criteria they need there. And guess what? These, these regions aren't by state. They can cross state lines, so they're really uh, just a different me uh, measure of a geogra geography than we're used to. Um, now, how will CMS encourage home dialysis or transplant in the ETC model? How will they encourage it? By including two payment adjustments, okay? By two adjustments. Those two adjustments to your payments will be the home dialysis payment adjustment and the performance payment adjustment. So you have two uh, adjustments to payments to incentivize you to go, these, go, go this way. Now the home dialysis payment adjustment is real simple. All they're going to do is increase their payments for home dialysis and home dialysis rate services over three years. So this is just an up, upward increase, upward increase. So year, 20, 20, year 2020, you get a positive 3% increase in your payment. Year 2021, you get a, po a positive 2% increase in your payment. And year 2022, they get a positive 1% increase in your payment. Okay, and that's it. So if over three years, you just have this slow increase in your payments, okay, for home dialysis uh, payments. Okay, that's it. Now, the other mo the other uh, adjustment is the performance payment adjustment. This one is a little bit more complex. So this can actually decrease and increase your payment for dialysis and dialysis related services, okay? So it's based off of two rates, your home dialysis rate and your transplant rate. Those are the two rates that they're gonna judge you by, okay? And based on those rates, you're awarded points. And those points are, are based on a percentile rank comparing you to your geographic benchmark here. Okay, so that I'll get to that in a second, but it's gonna compare you to a geographic benchmark here, okay? The points you're awarded are weighted heavily on home dialysis. About two thirds of it are weighted on home dialysis, whereas one third is weighted on the transplant rate, okay? And the number of points you acquire may increase or decrease your payment a certain percentage. Okay, so for nephrologists, you can have a bonus of five to ten percent, but you can also have a penalty of six to eleven percent in your payment. Okay, for dialysis units, dialysis units, you can have a bonus pay, bonus of five to eight, five to ten percent, but you can also have a penalty of eight to thirteen percent. Okay, so this could be an upward or downward adjustment of your payment. Now, just for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for your knowledge, the transplant rate we're talking about, transplant ratio, this will exclude patients uh, who are 70, greater than 75 on hospice or in a skilled nursing facility. So your transplant rate will not have to include those kind of patients, all right? 
Um, this is kind of try to give you an idea of the benchmarking for the performance payment adjustment. So your measurement year say is 2020. That's where you're actually being measured for your performance, right? But your benchmark year where you compare it to is about 18 months before that, okay? So your uh, measurement year is here, is, is in the center. 18 months before that <laughs> is your benchmark year. That's what you're compared to. And your performance is adjusted the year after that. Do you guys get it? So again, um, this is a adjustment over time and it's gonna continue over those six years. Now, if you can see here, it's kind of like a stepward, uh, st uh, stepward staircase, right? The benchmark here is constantly changing. It's not like the benchmark's always gonna be uh, back in 2018 or 2019. It's always gonna be staggering forward. And the reason why is because as this model proceeds forward, they're anticipating more people will be on home dialysis and more people will be on transplant. So your benchmark will change, okay? Now, who, uh, as far as patients in the ETC model, who is excluded? Beneficiaries outside the US, patients lacking Medicare Part B, people on Medicare Advantage. You gotta remember Medicare Advantage is a cost savings plan and this is what ETC is kind of trying to do that. So they're trying to avoid any people uh, in Medicare Advantage plans. Um, people who are 18 years or older, 18 years or younger, excuse me, 18 years or younger, um, they don't want in it. People with dementia, hospice, or acute renal failure. Exclude physicians, people who fall below a low volume threshold. Okay, so if you're a small practice, solo practitioner, you probably won't have to qualify for this. And those are typically people in the bottom 5% of managing clinicians, okay? Um, excluded ESRD facilities, those that have fewer than 11 attributory beneficiary years, um, which is essentially 132 total attributed beneficiary months. Okay, so if you haven't got paid for 100, uh, as a dialysis unit for 132 months of, of payments, then that, that excludes you. And that's not just for one patient, that's for all your patients, okay? Now the voluntary models. Let's go over the voluntary models. We have the KCF model and the uh, CKCC, okay? Some of, the, some of it is, uh, uh, some of them, are, uh, a lot of the stuff for them are similar, but um, some of it is, uh, is different, okay? Now the main difference here, okay, is the KCF and the CKCC both involve the nephrology practice. They both have the nephrology practice in there, okay? But the CKCC also includes and must include a transplant provider, okay? So it has to include a transplant provider. But it also can include, plus or minus, a dialysis unit and other providers. So what this creates is what we call a, C, uh, a, a, a KCE, a kidney care entity. Okay, this is kind of similar to the ACO model. Okay, so this this one you go into um, into you'll go into it with other people, other entities, other other, other groups. Excuse me. So in the KCF, you're by yourself as a nephrology practice, and the CKCC, you're going in as an entity with other people. All right, so that's the big difference. Um, now, as far as these two models, the voluntary models, they include patients with CKD4, 5, and ESRD. It's all three, okay? It runs from January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2023, and CMS reserves the right to extend it an additional one or two years, okay? Year zero of it in 2020 is a uh, mulligan. You won't get uh, you won't get dinged or anything. It's a, it's, it's a year for building care relationships and infrastructure, okay? That's what it's for. Year one, 2021, is when financial accountability will actually start. All right. Um, the way it works, you have to apply for these models by uh, January 22nd of 2020. Then wait for CMS to select you. Then you sign a participation agreement. Then CMLS, CMLS, uh, CMS will align Medicare beneficiaries to you. They will decide what patients they want to assign to you in these models, okay? Of, of your patients they want to assign to you. Now, as far as the participant, as you a participant, the responsibilities are you have to create a driver diagram. A driver diagram is essentially a game plan for how you a plan to uh, approach this mo these models. You have to answer surveys and interviews. You have to do webinars, one virtual learning activity every quarter. You have to track and report on quality improvement efforts. Um, and possibly in an, on an annual basis, you'll have to go in person to Washington DC area for, uh, for an event, okay? And you'll also be subject to audits of medical charts. Now this seems pretty extensive to me. Now I'm not sure about y'all's practices, but you know, this almost seems like you'll have to hire an employee just to kind of manage all this if you were to partake in these models. Um, out of these voluntary models, the excluded patients are beneficiaries outside of the US. Um, those that lack Medicare A and B, Medicare Advantage, again, Medicare Advantage is a cost savings plan. So these are these models represent cost savings plans, so it's no point in having a patient in that. 
uh, or those with Medicare as a secondary payer, um, uh, people less than 18 years old don't count, um, acute renal failure doesn't count, and if the patient themselves that assigned to you receives most of their care outside of your practice market area, so if greater than 50% of their care is outside of your market area, they don't qualify for your model, okay? So someone who's a traveler or something like that, they probably won't qualify. Now, the KCF model, this one again is for nephrology practices themselves. You, in order to qualify, you have to have at least a minimum of 500 CKD4 and 5 patients, okay? Oh, and 200 ESRD patients. That's how, you, how much you need to qualify. You will receive a capitated payment on a per patient basis, okay? And you will receive a bonus payment if patients receive a kidney transplant, okay? The full amount of this bonus will be paid over three years following the transplant. Uh, provided the transplant remains successful. So they're incentivizing you to not only get the transplant, but keep the patient going on transplant, okay? Now there's three capitate payments on this model in the KCF. You, um, now this is the one you wanna pay attention to, okay? You have the adjusted MCP, which is for dialysis patients, okay? This is similar to a current MCP we have. It's paid monthly, but guess what guys? This does not vary by the number of visits. So this does not vary at all by numbers. So I, from what I gather, you can see the patient once on dialysis instead of having to see them four times, okay? Now, uh, every patient is different. They don't want to pay you on the basis of number of visits you see them on dialysis. So they, they'd rather you decide that on your own. Um, and if you think about it, this probably saves us a lot of time because as you guys know, seeing them four times on dialysis is very difficult. Now in this situation, the payment equals, the, MC, the adjusted MCP equals the current in-center two-visit MCP. Okay, so the current in-center two-visit MCP um, is what they're essentially equating it to. Okay, and I'm going to actually go over the numbers on the next slide, so don't worry about it, okay? The next uh, uh, capitated payment we have is the CKD QCP, the quarterly capitated payment. Now this is for CKD fours and fives, okay, these patients. This one will be paid quarterly, y'all, quarterly. Um, and and it will not be risk adjusted for CKD four and five, meaning a CKD four, five, four and five patient is treated the same. It's not risk adjusted, okay? Um, it's a quarterly payment will actually be equal to the ESRD adjusted MCP amount, okay? So this payment will be equivalent to this payment. And I'm gonna show you that in a second, what I, what I think it may be, okay? Now, um, you will not, now th th this is kind of important. This will, for the CKD fours and fives, this capitated payment will not include inpatient visits in the hospitals or procedures. I'm, again, I'm an interventionalist, so I'm very concerned about that uh, capitated payment. So this does not include uh, procedures. So that those will still be off the ASE modules and the, um, the, and the uh, OBL modules. Okay, so that's not going to be off of, the, off of this capitated payment. Now the third capitated payment is the transplant bonus. This is $15,000 paid over three years. This is actually a pretty big bonus, and this really would incentivize you. So in this situation, again, it's paid over three years. So year one, after year one, you'll receive a $2,500 bonus. After year two, you'll see, receive a $5,000 bonus. And after year three, you'll receive the final $7,500. Okay, so they're trying to incentivize you not only to get the transplant to the patient, but also keep them on the transplant, uh, keep them going with the transplant, okay? Now, just so you know, if uh, with the, the CKD QCP, um, the, the C, with CKD 4 fives, again, that's a cap day payment, so it's going to actually essentially erase all these codes. Not erase all these codes, excuse me, you'll still have to build these codes, but you won't get reimbursed for them anymore. It'll just be considered part of the capitated payment. Now, this is what I came up with. Again, don't quote me on this one, but the pay, these are the, this is the 2019 fee schedule, the uh, full Medicare allowable payment. Um, and uh, for these various HD in-center, home dialysis, and outpatient clinic. So I just kind of put these together so you can get a kind of a perspective of where we're, work, where we're working with. So they're calling it, they're, they're calling the payment uh, equivalent to the two, three visit, um, uh, two, three visit, um, uh, uh, two, three visit MCP. Um, so that's $236. That's going to be essentially your adjusted MCP for a dialysis patient paid on a monthly basis, as well as your uh, CKD QCP, which is your CKD 4 or 5 patient, paid quarterly. Okay, so that's going to be both patients. Okay, so again, your dialysis patient that you see monthly, and you'll get that your uh, the adjusted MCP will be that much, and your quarterly payment for your CKD 4 or 5 patients will be the same. Okay, so that's about what, what we're working with. Okay, and again, this is a starting point. This is not the final payment. This is this is the starting point. So it can go up and down from here on out. Now, how do they get you up and down? 
they have something called the performance-based adjustment, like performance-based adjustment for the KCF, okay? Now, this is a little different than the uh, the other one for the ETC. This is assessed over six-month performance intervals, okay? So this is every six months or so, they're going to reassess you, and it's going to be based off your relative performance component, which is how you compare to other KCF practices, and the continuous, continuous performance com component, which is how you compare to earlier periods in the model. So you're constantly being compared to other practices, but also yourself earlier in the model, okay? Um, patient, uh, payments will be adjusted based on quality and utilization measures, uh, and the practice will be placed in uh, placed in one through eight scoring levels. Okay, one through eight scoring levels, and the top essentially what this means is the top fifty percent of practices in this in this model will have a positive adjustment in their um, payment. And the bottom 50% will have a zero to negative adjustment in their payment, okay? So again, the top 50% of practices in this model will have a positive payment adjustment, and the bottom 50% will have a zero to negative adjustment. So you can, in this, in this model, you can have a feasible, uh, feas uh, feasible you could feasibly have a 30% upside, but also a 20% downside, okay? So there are some, there are rewards, but there are risks, okay? Now the last model we're going to talk about is the CKCC. Okay. Now this is the well, this is for kidney contracting entities, the KCs, uh, C, the KCEs. Okay, kidney contracting entities. It's a collection of nephrologists, transplant providers, plus or minus the dialysis unit, and others. So others can participate if they want to. Now what qualifies as a transplant provider? One uh, that could be one transplant nephrologist, a transplant surgeon, a transplant center plus or minus an OP, uh, organ procurement center, organ procurement organization. Now, just so you know, in this model, a nephrology group can only be in one uh, kidney care entity, but a transplant provider can be in multiple kidney care entities. You understand what I'm saying? So again, a, ne a nephrology practice can only be in one uh, ki kidney care entity, but a transplant provider can be in multiple kidney care entities, okay? And in order to participate in this model, you got to have a minimum of a thousand CKD fours and fives, um, and or th and three hundred fifty ESRDs. Okay, so that's how many people you'll need in that. Okay, patients you'll need in that. Now this is very similar to the capitate payments under the KCF with the transplant bonus, but the difference here is the transplant bonus is going to be allocated a little different. Twenty uh, and the transplant bonus will be fifty. Uh, will be twenty percent to the nephrologist, twenty percent to the transplant provider. And the remaining 60% will be at the discretion of the entity. Remember, the entity is, 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 is an actual organization, so they will decide where 60% of those proceeds will go. Now, the kidney contracting entity must be a separate legal entity with its own tax identification number. This is a separate entity, okay? It must have a governing board. Example, board of directors. Now, the board will include nephrologists, other pro providers and participants, patients with ESRD or CKD or a patient advocate. And the members of this board have to have a fiduciary duty to the to the uh, to the entity, uh, the kidney care entity, not the practice. So if you're the nephrologist in the group and you're part of the KCE, you owe you owe your allegiance to the KCE, not your practice. So that's pretty interesting. Um, in this model, what they want you to essentially do is take take responsibility of the total cost and quality of care of the patient. Okay. In exchange, you can uh, can receive a portion of the savings you get Medicare. Okay. Again, this is this is like this essentially puts you at risk, so you get to share in cost savings. Now, the CK, uh, CKCC has three models. Um, you have the graduated model, where you kind of go in slowly and you gradually increase your risk and reward. So this is a graduated slow model. Um, then you have the professional model, which in this model you share in fifty percent of the savings and losses uh, of Medicare, which is just uh, traditional Medicare A and B. So if you save, uh, you get to share. If you save Medicare some money, you get to you get to say uh, you get to share fifty percent of that. Okay, it, it, of Medicare A and B. Now the global is pretty more is a lot more intense. It, in this model, you actually get to share one hundred percent of the savings and losses total total of uh, Medicare A and B. So you are really at risk in this. So you better know what you're doing essentially in this model. Um, but in addition, when you're the, in the global uh, global model. You will receive a total care capitation, a TC, uh, TCC. Okay, this is a monthly capitated risk adjusted payment. Okay, monthly capitated risk adjustment payment to manage the total patient. So I think what they're trying to do in this model is really put the, the nephrologist at the head of the patient and let him or her manage the patient. Okay, so um, I think that's what they're trying to accomplish here with the uh, with this model.
Now, with both these models, the KCF and the CKCC, what it's trying to do is incentivize healthcare providers uh, to, uh, to do preemptive transplants, to give them incentives, financial incentives, to move beneficiaries through the transplant process, to improve transplant, uh, tr to improve, excuse me, improve transition to dialysis, uh, meaning it is appropriately, appropriately timed and you avoid hospitalization. And they want you to manage the total cost and quality of care of the beneficiary with kidney disease. They want us to do it now. Um, additionally, CMS wants to demonstrate whether kidney disease is being delayed by these models interventions. Again, I think this is key. That's why they threw in the CKD four or five patients. They want to see if us managing it can actually slow the progression of CKD. Um, down and, and, avoid, and prolong ESRD as long as possible. So I think that's pretty, pretty interesting at this point. Now, I want to thank you all for going through this presentation with me. Um, uh, I did put a lot of work into it. Um, can you do me a favor and please like and share this video if it, you found it helpful? Please also, again, I told you all I'm big, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, pretty active on, uh, on uh, social media, so if you can please like and follow me on the various platforms, Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, or, or uh, YouTube, that would really help me out. And of course, feel free to comment um, or ask questions, I would love them, um, and uh, we can go from there. But anyway, uh, and remember, it's your kidneys, your health. <laughs>